and a church scam. And if you want to make sure to keep your money safe, you got to watch American Greed tonight at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Some people, of course, will do anything for money. Of course, you can't sugarcoat it when it comes to kids' health. Obesity, a nationwide problem. But a push is underway to put children's TV shows on a bit of a diet from ads for unhealthy food as corporate America tries to beat government rules that could be right around the corner. We're following the money tonight. But health food advocates don't. So a sugar fix is in the works, throwing classic children's TV commercials for a loop. Eleven big food companies have agreed to satisfy their critics by pulling unhealthy food ads from children's TV shows and websites that are geared towards the under-12 crowd. General Mills cereal tricks ads won't be just for kids anymore, and fewer kids will go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs during Saturday morning cartoons. Our kids' commercial experts are on the money tonight. Sam Kazman, General Counsel of the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Elaine Kolish with the Council of Better Business Bureau. She runs the Children's Food and Beverage Advertising Initiative. We'll start with you, Elaine. What is the motivation for this? Well, first, um, voluntary self-regulation of children's advertising goes back decades, and this initiative builds on that foundation. The participating companies here are doing this because it's the right thing to do and it's responsive to consumer demands. Sam, no way, right? Well, you know, I think they're responding to the threat of lawsuits and the threat of regulation. So you've got a free speech issue here. And frankly, when it comes to our kids, I think a hollowed out First Amendment is a much bigger threat to them than is Tony the Tiger. What do you think of that, Elaine? Do you think we're overstepping the bounds here? Um, I think that's baloney, that argument. These companies are doing this because consumers are interested in health and wellness. These are large, sophisticated companies. They are successful because they've been able to respond to consumers' needs and wants, and that's what they're doing here. They're very big targets for lawsuits. This has happened before, and when you've got an FTC hearing uh, uh, coming off right after this announcement, it's clear that the big push behind this is the force of law and nothing else. Well, Elaine, let me just ask you, why can't the market forces just take care of this for our culture? This is a market solution. These are industry members joining together voluntarily to engage in self-regulation. No one's forcing them to do this. They're doing it because they want to do it, because no. they think it's the right thing to do. This advertising ban will do nothing when it comes to the problem of childhood obesity. Oh, it's and not an advertising ban at all. After all, pets, pets themselves have been getting fatter, and I don't think the problem there is TV advertising aimed at pets. Uh, this is not an advertising ban. This is a voluntary effort that marketers are undertaking, and it's one that's going to be for their bottom line as well. Companies like PepsiCo and Kraft who have been um, using nutrition criteria to guide marketing decisions in the past, they have found, for example, PepsiCo has found its Smart Spot products well, to be their fastest growing product if line. If it's good for the bottom line, why don't you take an oath now that you will su not support any regulation or any lawsuit aimed at enforcing this? I'm not a regular regulator. This no, is a self-regulation association. <laughs> well, but Elaine, let me just ask you, I mean, when do you think there's any truth to the argument, and this is to play devil's advocate, that uh, they're doing this now because they can actually profit off it? This is not for the good of anything, that they can actually, they've seen some profit from this, and so they're just going in that direction. I think it's a win-win situation. Uh, con co companies can never go wrong when they respond to their consumers' desires for health and wellness products, and they respond to that. The fact that they're making money at the same time is great. Sam, long-term implication of this in your eyes? Well, one, it's not good for, for First Amendment precedent. Secondly, for any company that wants to come up with a new product, the fact that it faces advertising restrictions makes it that much uh, more unlikely it's going to go forward, because the best way for one company to kill another company's innovation is to to restrict advertising. Elaine, your argument that this is not just a PR ploy. No, this is an opportunity. It's a, the initiative is an environment that nurtures corporate responsibility and it, it stimulates competition. All right, thank you both very much, Sam and Elaine. A healthy debate on some healthy alternatives. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. From kids in food to 